shuffling his feet over the weekend while watching Canada struggle must have been Michael Grange, who joins us now, the multi-platform dabbler on Sportsnet. Mr. Grange, good day to you, sir. Gentlemen, how are we? Um, Mike, I, I can't say I saw the complete second halves of all the games over the weekend. I know you obviously did. And you're paid to do it. And you're paid to do it. Um, that seemed ex- that seemed excruciating to watch in its totality. To watch a team that was that was in it, that seemed to have some level of control, and then not have said control. Well, we've seen it before. I mean, it's uh, no, it was it was tough to watch. I think I think expectations going in were fairly realistic, uh, in the sense that nobody thought that this team that was. Certainly had talent, certainly had experience, but the talent and experience was sort of new to each other, if you want to put it that way. The group itself was, a, as a, was new. They would just go in there and waltz. But then all of a sudden they did, right? Like they were awesome in their first five games. And even the game they lost to Puerto Rico, they, it was just a, kind of a fourth quarter meltdown that cost them. They were otherwise, you know, right in it, were leading after three quarters. And so, so the, you know, through five games, they're arguably the dominant team in the tournament. And then uh, they just lose three completely different ways in games. Each one of them arguably could have put them into the into the World Cup. So tough to watch and tough to explain. And and uh, but you know that's sort of uh, being a Canadian basketball fan. You kind of get used to this stuff. <laughs> that was uh, we almost we're going to do a that so TFC later. I almost felt like bringing up a that so Canadian basketball because in the end, Grange, honestly, I couldn't I couldn't watch. I PVR'd the game on Saturday uh, after our game at McMaster, and that hurt to watch. And then against Argentina, once Luis Scola started making the run, I literally turned it off. I couldn't yeah. watch. I couldn't watch the end of it. No, I, I think I think what that speaks to a little bit is is, um, you know, the, you just you just can't help but want. You know Canadian basketball, and the, and you do know some of the people involved with the program, and you know how much they care, and that they are good people, and you want. Did you drop. The are phone? you okay, Mike? Are you Mike? Michael? Mike. Fumble. Mike. I told it's just a fumble. Hello. Mike? Good. Did you, did you lose the phone? What happened I there? Just dropped the phone. Are you so okay? Fumble. Anyway, you, you, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You just want the. You know. <laughs> you want to have a good story to tell. You Mike. Want to have, a good, have watch. You want to watch these guys at the World Cup. You want to uh, have this new era of Canadian basketball uh, get off on on the right foot. And uh, and then for a while there, it looked like it was going to happen, and uh, and it didn't. On the line with Michael Grange, uh, doing his best impression of a Giants running back here on Tim <laughs> David, and Sid. David Wilson on the phone. Sportsnet five ninety, the fan <laughs> and three sixty. Mike, um, I, I'm I am not as learned as you on the ways of the World Cup slash uh, World Championship of Basketball. Oh, but I, you are, Sid. Well, I don't know, because I'm but a little confused know. at how the, how, how the wild cards work, because technically... Oh, well, you said, you, you, you're familiar with the ways of soccer, right? Yeah, but they play each other to get into a World Cup. Okay. okay. I'm, 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 I'm hearing there's some lobbying that may have to go on here. There's not necessarily a playoff, right? It's like an obscure, abstract international body. It's the process lacks any definable criteria. It's not transparent, and it costs money. So it's like an IOC so, vote. Yes. Yeah. So short answer is, you know, people more familiar with it with me suggest that, you know, that there's four wild cards. I think in 2010, 14 teams applied for them. And, you know, chances are teams like countries like China, Russia, uh, you know, go down the list would probably get, get a, a look sooner than Canada might. And the only... You know, maybe if, if FIBA looks at some of the talent coming on stream and goes, wow, they'd be great to have in the World Cup. It'd be great to have Anthony Bennett or Andrew Wiggins or whoever uh, in a World Cup for Canada. Maybe that's, that works, but uh, but there's no guarantee of that. So what a, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hold my breath. What about Steve Nash's lobbying ability? Yeah. I, Darn it all, Mike. Do they, do they even know who he is? Who knows? I, I, I would hope so. You know? <laughs> what if Steve Nash walks in and does the Johnny Menzel right. and just looks at all the, the governing bodies? Four finger to thumb, Michael, international sign of money. Wait, wait, wait. So Steve Nash signs autographs for my, you know, like an underhanded cash grab? Yeah, this, I, yeah people, people would probably understand that. <laughs> By any means necessary, Mr. Grange, you know that. <laughs> By any means necessary. 
So, so Mike, let's let's say, okay, so you don't think the odds are good, although yeah. Timmy's point on Steve Nash is, is is valid in that, you know, this is a guy, this is a two-time league MVP who has some sway. But even... Yeah, as compared to a suitcase of gold bars from China, I mean, you know. Well, who can compete with that? <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, Mike, like, I remember, like, you brought up the soccer comparison. In 1992, at the European Championships, Yugoslavia, who were in the middle of imploding uh, as a nation... They were booted out of that tournament, and Denmark was allowed in. Right. Denmark then goes on one of the Cinderella runs in the history of world sport and wins the tournament, beats West Germany, beats everybody. I still say, till this day, that's the biggest piece of garbage I've ever seen in my life, that a team that did not qualify for a tournament got in by whatever circumstance and made a run. If you're Canada basketball, is this even how you want to get to a World Cup? Or can beggars not afford to be choosers in this point? Well, I would say the latter. I mean, if you can get in, you want to go in, get in. Um, they'll know probably by December of this year. Well, they'll know. They'll, they, I think first they have, to, oh, they have to decide if they want to go the wild card route because you got to lay down a big check. It was about five hundred. It was about five hundred thousand pounds the last time, and it's not clear whether that money to be considered is refundable or not. So that's that's issue number one. Um, and then and then after that. You, you know, you, the real story here, sir, the real issue is what can you do um, now that you're likely not going to be in the World Cup to make sure that this program uh, maintains some momentum, that next, uh, next summer is a productive summer, because it's not very long before you're trying to get to the Olympics. That's the summer of 2015. And guess what? You're going to have to, I think they finished sixth in this tournament, and you're going to have to beat about four of those tournaments for the teams that finished ahead of you to get to go to the Olympics, which is a which is a much tougher event to qualify for. And I don't think any amount of optimism around Canada basketball, you know, at some point you need some positive results to justify it all. And, and I think getting to the Olympics in 2016 would be a hell of a start. So I think that's got to be the focus, and you got to figure out a way next summer what needs to be done to make sure that they can hit the ground running in 2015. I guess the positive spin is that you look at that team and you see Corey Joseph, 21, Tristan Thompson, 22, and Anderson, Andrew Nicholson, 23. Yeah, I think Corey just turned 22. But, yeah, no, no that, that's positive. And, and I think you definitely saw elements of each of those guys that we are going to make them really good international players. And, you know, we're all familiar with the names coming. Uh, that should – um, that should contribute, but you know, so that that is possible. I mean, I mean, Andrew Nicholson. I think I don't think anyone was really expecting he'd go and be as, as a near dominant off- offensive force at times. Corey Joseph at times was near dominant. Tristan Thompson. I mean, he's you know he was outstanding, except you know he needed to, some of the now that he's shooting right-handed. He's not shooting quite as well. So apart from the free throw line, but that'll come. So I mean, those are three guys who are cornerstones of your program and will be going forward. And uh, and I guess the other thing that was interesting, just talking to Jay Trano after the game last night, was the feedback he got from all the people in the program, guys like Kelly, Kelly Olenek and others who weren't part of the program for various reasons right now. They're pumped, like they're jacked. They, they, they want to come back. Uh, the, the, they've bought in, and that's positive. Like there is, uh, you know, that's a big, big step. Um but, you know, the unfortunate thing is you, we, you're going to have to wait uh, about, well, two years <laughs> before yeah. you're going to see this crew uh, in business uh, when it, for something that counts. Damn Wikipedia Canada basketball page told me he was 21. <laughs> Should know <laughs> better turn, than... He just turned 22, but... No, I know. His own Wikipedia page. If I had just gone there, I would have been okay. So it's 22. I've always, I've, Damn Wikipedia. Wikipedia has never uh, steered me wrong, Tim. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing I think it, it still says I own piece of the Brunning. <laughs> yeah. So you know it's you know it's always correct. Uh, Mike, great job on the broadcast. Uh, regardless of how it turned out for the kids, uh, it was fun to watch, and uh, you and Josie and Sherm were fantastic. So a uh, good job. Nice of you guys to say. And uh, who do we got for the uh, CIS showdown next Saturday, Tim? Uh, we, got, we got Guelph and U of T. Ah, Western Mustang, <laughs> Western and uh, Mac. That uh, that was a pretty marquee matchup. Yeah, and it ended up being not, not, not so marquee. Yeah. <laughs> it ended up like Guelph U of T. Hope you had the over. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey. All right, guys.